activism not just to release a film every day but to actually for those 16 days really live the campaign and, and travel across the country and um, make the making of it as meaningful as, as the films themselves. I'm shooting 15 consecutive nights and, and being in the, starting late so that you, you can have the light and the projection working meant that most nights we worked through the night until 5 or 6 in the morning and then still had to edit the piece and, and get it ready to go go live later that day. So we had to find 15 stories to tell that we felt were representative of a range of locations, demographics, ages, to try and show that it really does happen anywhere to anyone. We then had to approach the families, which was incredibly um, difficult, yeah. difficult uh, for us and for them, I think, to, to have those wounds opened again um, was hard. We knew we wanted to do projections, um, so we had to take a lot of things into consideration at each location, the different surfaces that we'd be shooting against, um, the time of day, obviously we needed to be very dark, would there be ambient light that would interfere with the projections. And then just making sure that in those limited spaces, would there be enough to tell the story and, and give a sense of place and, and what had happened in each location. So the projectionist that we partnered with, Inka, she had incredible ways of manipulating the projection and the type that when it fell on the surfaces, she used glass bowls, um, powder that distorted the, the text as it fell on the, on the surfaces. So it was really interesting ways that we could animate and move the projection and the type without special effects or, or things that were added afterwards. Everything was done there in camera. The weather didn't behave itself. We got to it combination of gale force wind, yeah. rain, storms, freezing temperatures. Some of the locations were, were, were difficult to shoot in. Um, we were shooting in red zones, which are areas where ambulances and police don't go. Um, so we needed the help of, of community leaders to, to escort us in and keep us safe while we, while we shot there. Some family members have found it quite cathartic, they were quite glad that the stories are going out and that people are taking notice and also it's very moving to see them, I'm gonna, I don't want to start crying, it's very moving to see them see a big projection of a family member on, on a location. I think it's absolutely a beautiful gesture and um, I think it makes people aware of what's happening and um, keeping a story alive. It's quite touching actually. It brings back uh, the memories. Uh, from our family side, from my side, we, we really appreciate what you guys are doing. We intentionally chose to have an all-woman crew to support the subject matter that we're on. Everyone's kind and supportive. It's been awesome to be around feminine energy, especially with something that's a sensitive subject like this. And that's ours, you know, it's our voice. It's really painful, but I'm happy it's happening, you know, to show that you, you, people are still thinking about us. To speak on the behalf of my family, we are very honored to have such a tribute for my mom. You read about murders and you read about all these terrible things and it's just a name in a newspaper and it's kind of not real. So to, to bring it home for people and to make it real for people, we wanted to show the place it happened and we also wanted to capture a sense of, of the woman that died there. Each location is different, each story is different, and to try and capture a little bit of the essence of that, that's 
what I'm trying to do in the edit is to try and get people to feel what we're feeling because we get to be there. The first Foreman Foundation was established in 2005 and since then we've uh, donated over 70 million rand and in which the foundation works through our customers and we basically donate a portion of their premiums to the foundation which ultimately helps fight women abuse and we've helped over 90,000 women through all the organisations that we support and we really believe that the more women who join First Foreman the more women we can help. In 2017 we launched our For Women platform. Um, it's a platform that consolidates women abuse fighting efforts. Um, it's a place where there's a network of support and individuals can go onto this platform to either get the necessary help or if they're wanting to take a stand and they can connect with organisations who are looking for help. Um, and it's something that we are growing, it's something that we're encouraging all South Africans to become a part of um, and this is one of the platforms that we're using to continue fighting women abuse every day of the year until it no longer exists. Remember the woman we lost here, the young student who met her violent end here. Her name was Uinene, lured into her killer's lair, unsuspecting and unaware, a sacrificial lamb to the slaughter. The nation lost yet another daughter. Of all the places she'd been warned about, the post office wasn't one. Remembering is not enough. It's time to shine a light on women abuse. Get help or pledge your support now at 4-women.co.za.